Carol Hancock has been a minister in the United Church for 35 years and been on staff at the National Church since 2002. She works with the various parts of the United Church to facilitate communication. At the recent meeting of the London Conference of the United Church, Carol sat down with Matthew Penny to talk about the church and changes that might be coming in the future. Carol, thank you for talking to us at Life and Faith today. Um, you're here at the London Conference as the representative of the General Council. And our viewers may not have any idea what General Council is in the United Church of Canada. What, what is the General Council? Well, I'll start by saying uh, that the General Council is the decision body that um, encapsulates the whole of the denomination. So the General Council makes decisions for the whole of the United Church of Canada. We have a system in the United Church of Canada of a series of uh, community sizes, one might almost say. So you start with the congregation, the a particular church in the local community. It may have one or two congregations worshiping together. We call that a pastoral charge. The pastoral charges are grouped together into presbyteries. The presbyteries are grouped together into conferences, and the conferences together make up the whole of the General Council. So when I come to this meeting, one of the 13 conferences within the United Church of Canada, it's a little confusing because our annual meeting for our conference is what we're having here in London. Um, some people think it's a small c conference, but we use that term mm -hmm. to be the body. I can see that'd be confusing. Yes. So this is the meeting of London Conference that you and I are attending. Um, I work with the General Council's offices. So I actually uh, am always making sure when I'm here that I'm clarifying that I'm here to represent the offices of the General Council. And that's the executive offices in Toronto. That's right. right? Um, and so uh, our General Secretary who leads the staff who support the work of the whole of the denomination, Nora Sanders, um, is our staff lead there. The moderator, Marty Tyndall, is the elected leader. Okay. So it's sort of a series of teams that are always working together to live out the support of the work of the United Church of Canada. The General Council, which meets um, now on a pattern of every three years and will have its next meeting in August, is the body that makes decisions on the broad policies, um, tries to listen for the vision that God might have for us as a denomination, and works sort of with that he the, the good of the whole in mind. Now, what, what's your particular role at the General Counsel Office? You, everyone has a, a, a portfolio, I mm -hmm. guess, for lack of a better term. What, what's yours? Um, my work is called Conciliar Relations, and it's based on the language that we use of councils so that there can be a council at a congregational level. That we sort of think of each of these bodies, each of these circles as councils. Okay. Um, the general council being the largest of those bodies, including the whole of the church. But uh, the conference, in that kind of language, small c, is a council too, like we would sort of yeah. think of it. Sometimes in the past we've used the language of courts of the church, but again, that is connotation that sounds a bit well, off. That would be confusing to some people because a court sounds like where you're going to have law decision and legal That's stuff right. done. That's right. So many of us are using language, um, either um, language that's very comfortable to Christians of the parts of the body, okay. um, if we uh, turn to our scripture language, or perhaps of councils, so that these different parts of the body. My um, role at the General Council Office is to be particularly attentive to those many parts and to do everything that we can do to foster effective communication and relationship between those parts. So I really like to think that the, the emphasis in my work is conciliar relations. Okay. So part of the reason I would be here is that I'm hearing the work of this conference and then I'll be alert to what this part of the whole body of the United Church is, is uh, seeing as particular focus for this time. It's got to be a challenge for you to do that. I'm just thinking of all the different parts and the dozens of presbyteries and dozens of congregations out there and, and 13 conferences and mm -hmm. trying to make sure that everybody talks to each other the right way so that the communication is effective. Well, I, I sometimes think that uh, my work is the strategy of a thousand small things, but I spent a lot of time as a congregational minister before I was called okay. into this work. And in lots of ways, that's what I figure is true of a minister and a pastoral charge. Just so many people, as you're seeing here, so many um, people have given up 
days to come and work thoughtfully and prayerfully. As you know, we keep turning back into prayer and worship here. Yes. It's, I, I think um, the language of work is a lot more effective than business at any of these meetings of the church because as you know from sitting in that um, large room where we have hundreds of people here gathered, they're prayerfully working at a whole series of issues about how to be the church in this time, in this part of, of the church. And I think that helps people understand what it is we're doing more than if we use the language of business, for example. Okay. Well, as a person who gets to travel a little bit and, and like be here at London Conference for this, to, to work at the national office and see what's going on across the country, uh, I want to see if I can tap into your feelings about the church. Some people have said that it's dying. Oh, no, it's not dying, that it's, it's, it's doing very well. And I just wonder what you see for the United Church of Canada from your standpoint, uh, how we're doing and where we're going. I think that we are in such a process of change and as all parts of our society are detecting, change seems to be um, happening with more and more speed. Mm -hmm. So it's such a mixed experience at any moment and I'm finding if I talk to a group of people, they will be having a mixed experience just sitting there. So for some, um, there is a memory of ways the church used to be and it causes them lament that it's not the same. Right. Others didn't even know that church. Some of our younger community members never did go to a big Sunday school, for example. Mm. And so while people my age and older may mourn the changes that have seen smaller um, congregations, smaller Sunday schools, um, others are um, emerging into new leadership, um, becoming active in their Christian faith in a very different context where they don't have the surroundings of very large young people's groups, for example, or Sunday schools that some of us might have had, but instead are feeling called and led by the Holy Spirit into being uh, faithful Christians in a new time and age where they may not have large numbers of companionship. I think many are now living in a much more uh, grounded sense of interfaith communities. So while some in the past might have been very aware of their own faith home, might have had very little um, experience or connection with peoples of other faith. Again, our world is shifting and changing. Many of our communities are um, aware of a broad diversity of cultural backgrounds. Mm -hmm. And we see that expressed everything from food to um, language and, of course, into religious expression. It, it just, it, you, you struck a chord mm -hmm. when you said your comment about the, the people growing up having never experienced a large Sunday school like other people had, and you have those two groups together mm -hmm. trying to define church and work together to bring the Holy Spirit into play. That, that, that would mean your, your job would be even more difficult because we have such diverse groups within the church trying to work in a diverse culture. Well, my sense of encouragement comes from the fact that I think the Holy Spirit is endlessly inventive. And I do believe that our church is a piece of the body of Christ. It's uh, one way in which God is uh, making God's self known to others. And as long as we continue to try to figure out how we may do that with a spirit of deep humility, not understanding that our denomination is the denomination, okay, yeah. but to see that we are part of um, a people of God uh, looking to see how we might be faithful people in this time. I just have boundless um, sense of, of purpose and hope. I think it may look very different. We're already seeing how much um, we communicate differently. The tools that now make mm -hmm. this available on YouTube yep. and get messages across. You're not limited to say a London um, TV viewership anymore. Uh, the connections can happen so broadly. We're all just figuring out how these may be new opportunities to connect with each other. So my own sense of um, realizing that all change means loss and for some at any given point um, they may be finding it very hard to give up something that has been precious in the past. I also continue to see new things being born and new expressions of ministry and vitality. So I think in many ways we just need to, as much as we're able, approach this with a sense of um, excitement and anticipation and expect to be surprised. 
That's great to hear. I mean, we hear so much negativity about the United Church. It's nice to hear someone say that there is a hopeful presence of the Spirit that we're going forward. And there is something to look forward to in not that many years when the church is 100 years old in 2025. Mm -hmm. that there's something, there will be something to celebrate there. I, I just trust so. That's great. Well, look, thank you for spending some time with us today. Oh, I really welcome. appreciate it. Thank you. Enjoy the conference. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Okay.